In a previous video, we talked about how to manage mailboxes from the Exchange Admin Center. Now let's take a look at how we can manage groups from the Exchange Admin Center. So we click on groups, we're going to see four headings across here. And these are the four different types of groups that we can use with Office 365 Exchange. There's Microsoft 365 groups, there's a distribution list, a mail-enabled security group, and a dynamic distribution list. And as you click on each one, it will show you the groups down here that are associated with it. So I have no distribution lists, no mail-enabled security groups, no dynamic distribution lists, but I do have three Office 65 groups. Okay, so let's take a look at how, or let's start by taking a look at what we can manage with these groups, and then we'll talk about ways that we can create new groups. So I'll start with my sales group here. So I'm going to click on sales. This is going to pop up over here on the side, which is going to give me my options. So general information, name, sales, description, what it is, I can edit the description, email addresses, sales at bassett321.onmicrosoft.com. I can edit to create additional aliases, additional email addresses. So I'll do that if I want more than one email address to come to here. So let's say I want to add info. I want that to go to my sales group. So I'll just add that in and now I've got an additional alias. So if you email info at bassett321.onmicrosoft.com, it will come here and then just save changes. So that will allow us to modify our email addresses. Okay, uh, let's go back and in our members it's going to give us the owner and I can view or manage owners here and then anyone who is a member <coughs> of this particular group. And then under settings are my options for it. So I can allow or disallow external senders. And by default, this is disallowed. Well, obviously, if I'm doing an info, I'm going to want to allow external senders to send to this group. Do I want to send copies of group conversations and events to group members, or do I want them to stay just in the group mailbox? That's what this option is here for. And then I can hide from my organization's global address list. And we'll do that sometimes if we have a bunch of groups and we just don't want them showing up there because it clutters up our global address list. And then do we make this group public or private? What are delivery management options? Who do we want to accept message from? Who do we want to decline messages from? And then manage delegates. Now delegates are people who have the right to send as or send on behalf of this particular group. So this is where I would add the name or email address of my delegates. Okay, oops, let me go back to sales. So that was our settings tab. And then our last one is Microsoft Teams. And this is the Teams integration. And in this particular case, the owner doesn't have permissions or doesn't have a license that includes Teams, so it doesn't show up. But let's go ahead and open up this one here. Actually, let me show you something here real quick before I do that. Close that. You'll see right here under Team Status, that uh, little icon there indicates that this group has Microsoft Teams connected. So for this particular group, because this is owned by my account, which does have a trial license that includes Teams, I can go to Microsoft Teams, and that'll let me link to my Teams Admin Center with this group. Okay. Now let's talk about the different types of groups and creating a group. The Microsoft 365 groups are Microsoft's newest group type. It's only for Office 365. It doesn't integrate with on-premise Exchange servers. So if you're running an on-prem Exchange server, you won't see it. If you are running a hybrid environment, this only matters in the online hosted Office 365 uh, Exchange. It doesn't have any impact on your local Exchange server. Distribution list, mail enabled security groups, and dynamic distribution lists, however, can exist in both. So the Microsoft 365 is the latest one that Microsoft is really pushing, and it gives a lot of additional options. So Teams integration, shared calendars, things like that. The distribution list is, the other three are more legacy. They uh, were included in on-prem exchange. The distribution list does not have any security options. Basically, all it is is a group with a list of addresses. And when you mail the group, it sends a, 
it copies that message out to everybody who's part of the distribution list. Now, a mail day enabled security group will function the same way. The difference is this exists only in Exchange. This exists in Azure Active Directory, or if you're running an on-prem environment, in Active Directory locally. So this is a security group that we have then attached an email address to as well. It's going to function the same way as a distribution list, except that the distribution list can't have any security permissions assigned to it the way a mail to enabled security group will. And then a dynamic distribution list is a distribution list whose membership changes based on specific attributes. So let's start by creating a new group. So I'm going to click on add group and when I go to add group this is going to kind of give me a breakdown. Microsoft 365 allows teams to collaborate by giving them group email, shared workspace for conversations, files, calendars. In Outlook they show up as groups. Distribution list is an email address list, or email address for a group of people. All right, uh, enabled or mail enabled security gives you access to or lets you set security permissions for things like OneDrive, SharePoint, admin roles. All right, so I pick the type that I want. Now let me start with the Microsoft 365 recommended group. So we're going to click next. We're going to set a group name and I'm going to call this one temp because I don't feel like being creative right now. And then I'd set a description if I wanted to. Notice this one has the asterisk because it's the only thing that's required. I don't have to set a description so I'm going to go ahead and click next. And here's where I set my owner and I'm going to choose and I actually don't like this. This is popping up with my personal email. But here it's going to list my uh, actual users. And I don't like the fact that this pops up over the top of it, but this is my David Dalton account. So I'll choose that, and that's going to be the owner. Click Next. I can set a group email address, so we're going to do temp. And then I can choose to make this public or private. And if I hold my little icon over it, this tells me public groups can be joined by everyone. Private groups aren't open for everyone to join. Group owners can add members to them. So I want to make this a private group. And then I can choose whether I want to create a team for this group or not. And then I click Next, and this gives me all of my basics. Now notice something here. It did not give me the ability to add members. In the group creation process, there are a few things we can set, but we can't set everything. We're going to have to set things like membership later on. So anytime you create a group, you're also going to need to go back and add members to that group. Almost anytime we create a group. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this, and we're going to start over. And that was the process of creating a Microsoft 365 group. Let's go ahead and add a distribution group, and we'll just look at the differences. Now remember we said Microsoft is really pushing the Office or Microsoft 365 See right there, recommend it, do this. When you do the distribution, it says, hey, why not do Office 365? Well, we don't need all of those things, so we're just going to keep going. So, set the group name. Still not feeling creative, so we're going to do temp. And then next. For this one, set a group email address. Temp. And, <coughs> and then I've got some different options. Allow people outside my organization to send email to this distribution group, yes or no? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Joining the group, is it open, closed, or owner approved? So open, anyone can join this at will. Closed, only the group owner is allowed to add members. All requests to join will be automatically declined. So if you find the group through Outlook or through Outlook Web Access, your request to join the group instantly declined. Nobody gets in unless the owner adds them. With owner approval, then anyone can request to join and the owner is going to get a notification and then can approve or decline their ability to uh, join the group. And then for leaving the group, how are we going to do it? Uh, open, anyone can leave the group without owner approval. Just, I'm done, get me out of this group. Or only the owner can uh, remove members. All requests to leave will be automatically declined. So those are all of our options. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then once again, we're almost there. We can make some changes if we want. We'll create the group. And let's take a look at a mail-enabled security group. So we're going to add a group. 
mail enabled security and remember this is a security group that has impacts outside of exchange for office 365 we're just going to add mail to it so we're going to go to temp is going to be our name and then we're going to set a group email address and then communication do we want to allow people outside the organization to send to this mail enabled security group do we want to require owner approval to join the group and that's pretty much all that we have with the mail enabled security group now that will create the group inside azure active directory and then you can add users there now more often than not if we're doing mail enabled security groups normally what we do is we create the security group inside azure ad and then we choose to assign an email address to it there that's where we're going to actually work with it more often than not but you do have the ability to create that mail enabled security group here let's look at our last type which is going to be a dynamic distribution list so we're going to add a group and we're going to choose dynamic distribution now this is going to send emails to everybody on the list we don't add group members to this uh, unlike other groups users can't be added in or can't request to add in or whatever this happens automatically based on specific conditions so let's say I wanted to create a group for Yakima then what I can do is I can create my group and then I can set conditions that match that particular setting uh, let me show you what we mean here I'm gonna create a user or create an owner I'm gonna set myself as the owner and then I can choose which types can be recipients so I'm gonna choose only users with the with uh, exchange mailboxes and notice I can set other options here as well and then this is where I set my conditions so for my conditions I can choose a state or province company department or up to 15 custom attributes all right where do these come from well when we create the user account we can set the state or province the company the department and all of these custom attributes so I can choose custom attribute number one and I can make that the city and then when I create the user account I just set custom attribute one I set the city that they want so here I can say custom attribute one needs to be Yakima and if custom attribute one is Yakima then they will be a member of this dynamic group and then I can add additional rules if I want to as well I can say Yakima department sales as opposed to people in Seattle Spokane or New York who are in my sales department okay so there we go that looks better and then I can go to next set my settings group email address this is going to be Yakima sales and there we go we have now not created a dynamic distribution group but if we create group then it creates that dynamic distribution group for us okay let's say I created something other than a dynamic distribution group and I need to be able to add users to it so I created a regular distribution list or I created a Microsoft 365 group or something like that and now I want to add users where do we do that well we looked at that a little bit ago but let's go ahead and since we're looking at or talking about it now let's go find it I'm gonna open up my group and I'm gonna to go to members now remember I can set these groups up so that people can request to be added into the group but that means we're relying on our users to request access to the group if we want to control access we come to members and here under members we're going to click view or manage members and then we're going to add members and this will display all of our mail enabled users and let's go ahead and add that person and that's how we're going to add members to a group without waiting for them to request it we can ask them to request it but honestly this is going to work a little bit more effectively okay there we go that is how we create and manage groups in exchange for office 365